one place. Not big talk. Good evening, Internet of People. Once again, I'm doing this a bit later than I would have liked. Um, I put up a blog post today. My blog is accessadventures.wordpress.com and I put it up because I ended up sending a lot of tweets earlier on when I got a phone call back from physical and sensory disability services. Now, as I said last night, I had spoken to Joanna McMorrow personally yesterday and she said that she would call me back first thing this morning, which she did not do. She had said she would call a little after 10, so I rang the office at about 11 and was told she was in meetings once again. Um, I asked for a call back as a matter of urgency and I got a call back from someone else, the same person who had left me a phone message last week promising a review in the middle of last week, which obviously didn't happen. It also didn't happen yesterday, which was two weeks after my return home, and it didn't happen today either. I was told it will happen on Thursday morning, which will be two and a half weeks after coming home. Every day makes a difference. Every day makes a difference to my ability to recover, to my ability to function in the long term. So the constant delaying and constant deferring has a huge impact. Um, if I had been told before I went into hospital that there wouldn't be extra hours for, you know, at least, what will it be, four and a half weeks after my surgery, then with the hospital's help, I could have arranged for a convalescence home until the hours were in place. The hospital and the nursing staff were totally behind me staying in the hospital until those extra hours were set up. And they were given the impression that they would be forthcoming until they finally got hold of Joanna McMorrow and she said no, they were not going to be forthcoming. So I was sent home under false pretenses, under a false promise, um, and that's detrimental to my health and to my ability to recover from this surgery. On Thursday morning, it's not going to be Joanna McMorrow doing the review. It's going to be Jerome McGurl, who is the key worker for people with mobility impairments in this region. It will be interesting to see if he actually shows up because there's been at least two times in the past when he has said he will come to my house to speak to me and never has. The reason for this is that my key worker is with the National Council for the Blind of Ireland because I was blind before I was mobility impaired. I have never met my current key worker. My previous key worker was so good she got promoted out of the job, as is so often the way. But she was more than happy to write letters and state that she had no expertise when it came to my mobility needs. I asked physical and sensory whether I could either get a second key worker, to which they said no, or change my key worker, to which they also said no. And it was on these occasions that Jerome McGurl, who is the mobility key worker, said that he would come and talk to me, which he never did. I'm not necessarily that hopeful about how this review is going to go. Um, no more than a key worker trained in working with people with visual impairment is not going to appreciate my mobility needs uh, caused by my chronic pain condition. 
a person who is a mobility key worker is not necessarily going to understand the interaction between my mobility needs and my needs as visual impair a, a visually impaired person. There is a massive gap when it comes to having multiple disabilities and falling into multiple categories. And a lot of people with genetic conditions or congenital conditions fall into more than one category and it's whichever one they write down first is the label that you're stuck with. Having a sensory impairment, so visually impaired, hard of hearing, deaf, blind or deaf blind, uh, is a low priority when it comes to disability support services. Typically, a visually impaired person who applies for a personal assistance service is granted a maximum of two hours per week. I think I was quite lucky that when I joined the service, I got 10 hours per week, which facilitated me actually working and pursuing my education and all the rest of that. Um, and the fact that when my disabilities multiplied, I was given one and a half times the support, whereas I have more than two and a half times the impairment, if you like. There are a lot of ways in which the visual impairment interacts with the mobility impairment and makes things all that much more difficult. For example, in assistive tech, I use a screen reader in order to read content off the screen. I would like to use, uh, what do you call it, speech recognition software a lot more in order to write text to screen and um, navigate the computer, um, which people are probably familiar with the program Dragon, um, which is the, the best software to do that. But in order for Dragon and my screen reader JAWS to work together smoothly, you need a third application, which is called JSAY, which the last time I looked cost about $500. So that's just one example of how multiple disabilities multiply the, your barriers to participation and to see the encroachment of a second disability as requiring less than twice the support is uh, frankly a slap in the face. And like I said, I'm not massively hopeful about how the review will go because, you know, my mobility impairment is not as bad as some other people's and that's how it will be assessed. Um, yeah. As I'm speaking about this, I'm realising I'm really not feeling great about it. Um, aside from that, you know, nice things happened today. The PA who's filling in for my main PA who's on hospital, uh, on hospital, Jesus, listen to me, not on hospital, she's in uh, on holidays, for goodness sake, uh, much better. So, yeah, the PA who's filling in for her um, cooked me a pilau rice this evening and you know she brought along her own garam masala and from home um, in order to make it and it was really tasty and you know we had a really good chat and it was just really nice and I do like having her around and she works very well but you know I'm not comfortable asking her to help me wash or you know even like change the dressing which has come loose again since I washed last night. By the way, that bath that I had last night, or mini bath, um, I'd been thinking about having that since last Thursday night. Um, so I thought about it on Thursday night, and it took me until Monday night to actually do it. Um, that's what it means when you don't have sufficient support. Um, I also didn't sleep well last night, once again, and did get a little bit more sleep this afternoon. Although I went back into my bedroom and closed the door because 
it was a sunny day and that meant that all of the lawnmowers and all of the strimmers were out and I was realising that it was really wrecking my head and upsetting me, the level of noise from my front room. Um, so I got a bit of sleep, but yeah, not enough. So I'm going to try and get some more sleep now. We'll see. I mean, this whole situation and the, the stress of it and having to think about and plan things, it's interfering with my sleep. Um, you know not good anyway I thought I was in a better mood than I was <laughs> so I shall leave it at that for this evening anyway um, good night out there internet wherever you are <laughs>